guys and welcome back to my channel so today we are going to do my labor and delivery story and we have my beautiful daughter Emery here with us so hopefully she doesn't act too terrible in this video she usually just wants to be on me so I gave birth on April the 13th so on April the 12th probably around hmm, I'll say 12 o'clock at night um, that's when I started having really intense contractions. They were about an hour apart and I was trying my hardest not to call my boyfriend at work. So I was like, you know, pushing through them. I was on video chat with my mom and my sisters the whole time um, because, you know, they couldn't be here with me because of the coronavirus. So I could just video chat with them. That was as close to, you know, more support as I was going to get. So... Yeah, we were on video chat the whole time and my mom was timing my contractions and around maybe two o'clock that's when things just got really unbearable for me so i called my boyfriend and he came immediately we grabbed our bags and we went to the hospital so when i went to the hospital that night i went to triage and they told me that i was in labor um i did lose my mucus plug however i was in very early labor and um, I was only one centimeter dilated and my cervix had still not softened out. So they sent me home. Um, when they finally released me from the hospital after monitoring me for a couple of hours, um, it was maybe eight o'clock the next morning. Um, they kept me in the hospital so long the night before because baby girl right here um, was giving them a really hard time. Every time I would get a contraction, my heart rate was going down and as well as hers. So we were basically in distress every time I got a contraction. So they wanted to keep us there and monitor us and they didn't want to let me leave until her heart rate had kind of normalized. So that's why we stayed for so long the night before. So once they released us at eight o'clock the morning of April 13th, we came home and I took a hot bath and I just kind of relaxed a little bit and tried to fight myself through the contractions. But by about 12 o'clock that afternoon, it was pretty unbearable and I just couldn't take it anymore. And I told my boyfriend, he had to take me to the hospital because I could feel pressure, like I could feel her head down there and it was super uncomfortable for me. So I told him to just take me to the hospital. We got to the hospital, we checked in and went through the health screening and everything like that. Um, we went up to the labor and delivery floor and this time I did not go to triage. They took me straight to a labor and delivery room. Um, when I got into the room, they gave me some, some fluids in my IV and for about an hour I was good pushing through the contractions and then it started getting worse. So they brought me some fentanyl and it was not helping um it was not strong enough okay the pain was ill bearable like it was not bearable for me so i was just like hey listen i can't do this this is this is hard for me whole time y'all my boyfriend is taking a nap on the couch i'm talking about y'all he sleeps so hard i'm crying going through my pains and he is dead asleep like he, he he doesn't hear like he was so tired he stayed up with me the whole time we were in the hospital the night before and then he had also went into work that night so he was super tired so he passed out he was dead asleep um and i was standing in the hospital room like laid over my hospital bed like rocking back and forth um, just trying to get through the contractions and it was getting so hard and the moment I was just like, okay, I need more drugs, my water broke. So my water broke around 2 o'clock that afternoon and after that, the contractions started coming back to back to back to back. Um, and it was super uncomfortable, super, super uncomfortable for me. Um, they came in and checked me after my water broke and I was still only six centimeters dilated, but my cervix had completely softened out. So, um, she asked me at that moment if I wanted an epidural. And at first I said, no, I was like, no, I don't want an epidural. I'm fine. I'm fine. Maybe an hour later, the contractions are getting worse and worse and worse. 
Um, I'm like, hey, yeah, go ahead and give me the epidural. So they told my boyfriend he had to get out the room while they gave me the epidural. And I was trying to figure out why. But the moment the motherfuckers gave me the epidural, that's when I figured out why. Okay, when I say getting an epidural is so painful. The nurse was standing in front of me like how I have my baby standing in front of me. Well, sitting in front of me. The nurse was standing in front of me and um, she was like, if you need to, hold on to me, grab on to me. And in my head, I'm just like, why would I need to do that? I'm just getting a shot. Y'all. The epidural was probably the worst part of my labor. Okay, the doctor came in and he, you know... Gave me the epidural and everything, but it hurt so bad. I was literally crying and screaming at the top of my lungs. My boyfriend was outside the hospital room, so he heard everything. Um, when the epidural was finished, I felt so sore. My back was hurting so bad, and it just was burning and stinging. He came back in the room, and he was like, Babe, are you okay? Like, what happened? You sound like you was in here dying. And I'm like, because I was, y'all, that epidural hurt so bad. I would not advise anybody to get an epidural, and I would never get another epidural because it is so painful. And honestly, the epidural did not help me. By the time I got the epidural, I was about mm, seven and a half, eight centimeters dilated. Um... I started pushing around 6 o'clock or so, around somewhere in the 6 o'clock hour, okay? And I felt all of my contractions. For me, the epidural did nothing, so I got stabbed in my back, in my spine, for nothing because the epidural did not help me. So, they um, had me pushing, and I was pushing really slow. Um, I didn't want to push really hard because I did not want to tear. So I was, you know, slowly pushing, easing and easing and easing. Um, I did not let them rush me at all because I was not having it. Like, I was just not going to tear. That was my thing. I didn't want to tear. I knew it would be painful, but I did not want to tear. So I was taking my time pushing. And when I started pushing, I felt everything. The epidural did nothing for me. I cannot stress that enough. The epidural did not do anything for me. I felt everything. So I was pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, the only thing is my legs were numb. My legs were numb. So it was hard for me to like pull my legs towards me um, because they were numb. That's the only thing the epidural did for me. Numb my legs. Um, but I could feel everything else, all the burning and the pain down there, I felt it. So about mm, a third of the way, um, when I started pushing, the um, nurse was like, oh my God, I can see her head, you're crowning. And my boyfriend looked down and I thought that I was going to see disgust on his face, but he started like crying, not like boo-hoo crying but like you know tears were falling out of his eyes you know it was just a emotional moment so once i started crowning so they called it um which is basically when the baby's head is starting to push out of your vagina y'all when i say that was probably the worst part of the pushing and the worst part of the labor because it burns so bad and they literally call it the ring of fire and i know why because it burns and the pain is so intense um but I pushed it through and when I finally pushed her out, um, this was the scariest part for me. Um, when she came out, she wasn't crying. Um, they snatched her and took her straight to the little bed that they have in the room set up to care for the baby. Um, my boyfriend did not get to cut the umbilical cord. The doctor cut the cord and they snatched her and took her away because she was not breathing. Um, this was the scariest moment for me because, y'all, I'm so sorry, but this was the scariest moment for me because I just was like, what? why is she not breathing? What if she doesn't make it? And I'm literally laying there with my feet still up in the in the stirrups like just crying and bawling my eyes out because she was she still wasn't crying um minutes were going by and minutes were going by and she still wasn't crying so i was just super concerned and my heart was just breaking every second that went by that i didn't hear her because i just felt like i had failed at that point because i was just like i went through all of this and for you know this to be happening right now i was terrified um because I just 
had that thought in the back of my head what if she doesn't make it um i knew that i had god with me but you guys i just i couldn't help it i was terrified and i was scared my boyfriend was consoling me and he had his head on my chest and we were both just like very emotional and then i heard her start crying you guys and then i started crying even louder because i was super happy that she was okay and everything was good with her and it was very 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 emotional um it was even more emotional for me that i couldn't have my family there so it was just us um but i did have a really fast recovery they released me from the hospital pro exactly 24 hours after i gave birth like literally i was released on the 14th at about eight at night which was like a little bit past when I gave birth. Um, I did give birth at, I want to say 7.13 at night or 7.18 at night. It was around in there. Um, but yeah, they released me 24 hours later. So I don't know if it was because of the COVID-19 situation and they were just trying to rush me out of the hospital or if they just felt that I was okay to be released. So before she could be released you know of course after you you have birth they send you to a different room at this point which is your recovery room so um probably 30 40 minutes after i gave birth you know they came in cleaned me up and everything and we packed all of our things from that room that we were in which was our labor and delivery room and we went to the recovery room so in the recovery room, um, it was like a TV and all that good stuff. Wish they had the same stuff in the um, labor and delivery room. But um, it was a little bit bigger. It had more space. Um, it had a bassinet for the baby in there, like the little plastic hospital bassinet or whatever. Um, but yeah, it had a bassinet in there for the baby and a pull-out couch for him to sleep on. And of course, I was in my hospital bed. Um, it had a private bathroom, so it was very private and comfortable. Um, we immediately ordered something to eat because I hadn't eaten the whole time I was at the hospital, so I was starving. Um, we got Chick-fil-A because our hospital has Chick-fil-A and Starbucks, so I also ordered me a refresher from Starbucks and Chick-fil-A. I got, you know, food from Chick-fil-A. But um, I ate and I was just like honestly so exhausted and tired and drained like emotionally and physically. Um, Emery was sleeping in her bassinet and we both like just took a nap. You know, it was late. Um, we probably went to sleep around maybe 10, 11 o'clock at night and we were just exhausted and tired. The next day, um, it was the hardest. That was the hard day. Um, she cried a lot. It was like different immediately, like immediately, you know, like those instincts of being a parent kick in and we had to just like step up, you know, it was really hard and I'll definitely let you guys, um, know how I feel being a mom and just the things people didn't tell me about being a first time parent and caring for a newborn. So that'll be another video, but that second night was definitely the hardest. The first night wasn't too bad because she was in the in the nursery um, at the hospital and everything. You know, they gave her her first bath and it was pretty late. And they took her to get checked for like her bilirubin levels and jaundice and all of that stuff. So they took her to run all her tests and everything after she was born. So the first night we got to get a little bit of sleep. You know, even though it was super uncomfortable for me because I was in a lot of pain. My uterus was... Um, contracting and i was continuing to have contractions and so it was pretty uncomfortable for me to sleep so the first night wasn't too bad but the second night everything definitely set in and it was real that we were parents and we felt it um but that's gonna be it for my labor and delivery story you guys um stay tuned for the next video bye